to be a CEO is a calling. You should not do it because it is a job. It is a calling and you have got to be involved in it with your head, heart and hand. And your heart has got to be in the job. You got to love what you do. It consumes you. And if you are not willing to get into the CEO job that way, there is no point getting into it. A kothagulo amar noy eti Pepsi ex CEO Indra Nui tini bolle chilen. Ashole ta hole CEO ra kibabe chinta kore, kibabe tarata the leadership trade gulo niye egiye jai. Ba amra jeta bollam je how they are involved in uh, it with their head, heart or hand. A shop kichui achke amra shunbo. Welcome you all to Think Like CEOs powered by Daraz. Achke amader shate achen duijon CEO amra tadir theke janbo. तादेर शाफुल लेर गल्प गुलो Dear viewers, today we have with us two amazing CEOs who are leading in the telco and airlines industry. We have with us Eric Oz, CEO Banglalink. We have also with us Emra Karaza, country manager, Turkish Airlines. Thank you for being with us and uh, giving your valuable time. So, now I will go to Eric. What was your aim in life when you were a student and do you think your objectives changed over the uh, like span of your life and career and uh, whether the basic vision remains same? Well Roy, um, when I was young, I wanted to be an engineer. I always knew I wanted to be an engineer. In fact, I was so much into um, engineering that when, when I got a, a stereo system as a young kid, I was not so interested in the sound. I opened it because I wanted to look inside and see what's inside. Um, and I think I kept that interest. I think uh, over time, of course, I became more of a, a leader maybe and, and less of an engineer. But the basis is still technology and I think it, it has remained. So the basic uh, vision that remained. And uh, now coming to uh, Mr. Emra. When you were a student, again, like, was this the position you were aspiring for uh, to be a CEO? And if it's not, how actually ch it changed over the span of your life? Uh, actually, it's it's not. You know, in this uh, this is kind of culture in Turkey. Uh, always, when you are young, they are asking, "What do you want to be in, in the future?" And even if you don't have any idea, you have to answer. And when I was a kid or when I was young, I was dreaming to be ambassador actually. And it was my dream. But unfortunately, I couldn't be. And uh, now I am, I am in Bangladesh as a country manager in aviation sector. And uh, you know, there are some periods in our life. It's affecting the, our, what is that, the positions or where we are. And uh, the, the most important uh, part in my life, is there is a university exam in, in, in Turkey. After, uh, after the high, high school, uh, after your graduation, you, we are going to the exam. Then as per our results, we are taking place to you know, universities. And which departments you, you want, you are selecting that department. I, uh, I entered to that exam three times. And the third time I selected uh, one department, you know, just international finance in uh, North Cyprus in uh, Eastern Mediterranean University. And I, I, I told my father, we call Baba, Baba, I won. But I was not uh, thinking to go, but he said, no, no, you will go. Then actually I was not dreaming to study on, you know, international finance or that kind of things. I was dreaming to be ambassador, but unfortunately, anyway, and after my graduation and, you know, the, 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 I got some offers and I started to aviation sector. Now I am here. As I said, it was not my dream, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so it's very important to be happy and maybe the aim uh, can change, but you were successful. That's the greatest thing in life. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes. I think. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, as we were talking about this uh, happiness thing, uh, again, a, qu a question to you. Uh, like, we have seen what uh, COVID has done to us. Uh, 
this COVID-19 thing changed everything this pandemic. So, uh, being part of an aviation industry, uh, so how to come back from this challenging situation and uh, then thriving again? So, a perspective of CEO, if I ask you, how a CEO should think and work on that? You know, uh, if you are leading a company or leading the people, as a leader, you have to read the near future. Just the near future means the short term, let's say after six months, after two years or two years later. And as an airlines, what we did and we saw there is uh, one opportunity. You know, Bangladesh or this kind of countries, we have the ethnic passengers. We are dividing the passengers like ethnic, leisure, group, holidays, that kind of uh, and it is uh, in Bangladesh we have the ethnic passengers. Ethnic means they have to fly. They cannot stay. They have to go. Then I saw this. Actually, I don't want to say I. And we saw this uh, opportunity with my team. And we informed the headquarters, you know, the Istanbul. And we said in pandemic, let's increase the frequencies. And they said, are you sure? I, we said, yes, we, sh we, we, we are sure. Let's do that. And actually what we did exactly, we read the near future and uh, we trust each other with my team and now we are successful. And we you know before pandemic we had the seven flights, weekly seven flights, now 14 flights we have. There is no any destinations or airlines in the world, as I know, increase the frequencies 100% in pandemic. So that's the trait of a leader, like seeing challenges as opportunities. Eric, we have, a act, we have an activity now. So it's for our viewers. Uh, there are 26 cards. We call it Word of Positivity. We want to spread positivity. Uh, so you have to select from the stack one card, and we will ask one question to our readers. So can you please select one? I'm very happy to choose something about positivity. I'll choose this one. Thank you. Yes, so it says affable. A for affable, it means friendly. So what you have to do is, uh, who are watching our show, you can just in the comment section write a sentence using affable and how this word is changing positively your life. Uh, so keep commenting and you will get 1000 taka voucher from Daras. So keep commenting, we are coming to the next question. Uh, Mr. Eric, uh, being part of the evolution of an industry. So you have been here in telco industry, you have seen how it actually evolved, how it changed. So how uh, do you have to change the leadership pattern as well as the industry changes itself? Yeah, I, I think um, leadership is in a way situation based. You, you have to look at where the company is and in what situation the company is and, and where the team is going and so on. You also need to look at when you are in the industry like airline or for that sake in telecommunication, you need to look at the, um, the national economy and, and the situation in the country. Uh, and and uh, last but not least, you need to understand what the customers want. And the customers, they, they may uh, want, to, they, they have different needs uh, in different situations. So I, I think uh, leadership for me is, is to a great extent a, a, a function of, of, of all these, these factors around you. But it, it's also to some extent a function of where you are in life as a leader. Because I, I think, you know, uh, maybe when you, when you are a long, young leader, you are looking for your own career and you are thinking about, you know, if I take this decision, what does it mean to me? While maybe a little bit later in life you, you, you look at things differently and you take leadership decisions based on how you can make your team successful or how you can do something for your country or uh, how you can do something for the greater good. So it's all a, um, I think it's a, it's a function of many different things and, and, and the same leader may have, uh, may not fit in different uh, situations, right? Okay. So uh, as you said, like, uh, uh, leadership is about uh, what's happening in that situation. So if I ask you, like uh, you have been to Bangladesh, you have seen different culture, you have seen different kind of people. So why it is important for a CEO to embrace inclusion and uh, belong to a culture? 
Oh, I, I think that's uh, totally es essential. And uh, if, if you connect this to Bangladesh, I came to Bangladesh first time 21 years ago. Okay. And, uh, and of course, uh, at that time, uh, telecommunication was in the very early days. And, and uh, you know, at that time, we had, for example, the most important telephony service in the country was uh, the village phone, which was served by ladies in the villages. While, while now we see what's happening, it's, it's a totally different situation. Uh, so, so ag again, you need to understand the whole situation around you. How can, how can the ecosystem help giving a service? At that time, the village ladies had an extremely important role in, in giving telecommunication to, to everyone in the country, while, while now it's, it's different than I. Diversity for me is many different things, including gender and, and, and so on. When I go back to our company, I, I see people with different backgrounds, it could be many different backgrounds. Uh, people with different backgrounds, they add different value. And they understand customers differently, which is extremely important when you are in a, in, in a uh, service industry. Thank you, Eric. Now, uh, coming to Emra, uh, we know no one is perfect. And uh, sometimes we get questions from young viewers like, uh, how I can work on my weaknesses? So, as a leader, uh, how uh, do you think you can identify weaknesses of uh, your teammate and as a leader, how can you help them develop that? Oh, such a, a difficult question. Actually, you know, to, to learn the weakness of the colleagues or the staff, there are too many ways to understand. First of all, what I am doing as a leader, I am trying to know them. I'm trying to know their uh, families. I am trying to know what they like, what they dislike. And then uh, if I know them, then I can do or I can develop their weaknesses. Uh, it's, it's, uh, or I can help them to avoid the weaknesses. And uh, for example, uh, if I need the example, you know, when you ask the, what is that, the, your colleagues or who is working with you each morning how are you even that one is affecting their uh, you know the what is that the happiness or their uh, focus in, in the job they, they, they will be they will be happy just i am trying to touch to every single things with my with my colleagues this is the first thing as i said if if i know them with the all details whatever uh, what they like what they what they dislike then it will be easy to to what is that they to find their weaknesses and what we are doing to improve their you know uh, quality or the strength and uh, uh, we are trying to put some competition in between this is the first thing we are doing and of course they have some regulations on uh, and you know the the best way I think uh, we are uh, fair you know we are judging them with the ethic ways and I am I am really open to them if I am open to them then they will be open to me and if I am real you know I am real to them then they will be real to me that's why uh, with this way we can uh, we can decrease their weaknesses and we are we, we can help them so it's all about the empathy part uh, as we are discussing about this empathy thing, let's spread uh, positivity. So, there's oh. activity time. You will take one uh, word of positivity and we will ask our uh, viewers uh, to do one activity. Please, select one. I like orange. Orange, okay. Yes. So, it says eloquent. Uh, it's about fluent or persuasive in speaking or writing. So, viewers, uh, in the comment section, you just write a sentence with this word and how actually these words or uh, this thing uh, can change your life positively. Keep commenting and you will win 1000 Taka Daraj voucher. So, coming to Eric again. Eric, what is more important for an organization? Mission? Vision? or values, or all three? For me, it starts with values. Okay. It's very clear to me that uh, if you want to build a sustainable organization and you want to build a sustainable product uh, for your customers, 
it starts with the values of the people creating it. Uh, of course, there are lots of other dimensions in, in, <coughs> in life, also in professional life. But if the people have the right values, they can create anything. So, it's about values and values can uh, take one organization ahead. Uh, so, now a question for both Eric and Emra who wants to answer first can answer like we always talk about success, success of individual organization. Uh, what is actually success and how you can actually measure it if, if I come to uh, Emra first. Okay. It's, uh Actually, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, what's the success it, uh, and how we will measure it, it. Of course, there are too many metrics about that. But I think for the companies, there are two main things, as Eric also, he mentioned a uh, little bit about that. There are financial things which are related with the numbers and there are non-financial things like values customer satisfaction that that the, that actually if we have the good numbers then we can say oh, yes we are successful that's right because the financially you are okay but the non-financial things it's uh, you know the the measurement the, or measuring it's not easy let's uh, let me give you an example about Turkish Airlines you know our motto one of the our motto is we are flying more countries than others. What does that mean? We are flying more than 150 countries. Actually, this is related with our financial part also. Again, non-financial parts. Because if you do the, the if you are not uh, financially powerful, then how you will fly to 120 countries? That is not easy. That's why it's uh, when I hear you know this uh, motto, I said yes, we are successful. 100% we are su successful for both sides, even financial, even non-financial. So there are two aspects of success. One is financial and another one is, is uh, non-financial, uh, but those are all about the values that uh, it can create. Uh, now there is a quiz time for our viewers and uh, Eric, you will ask one question and in the comment section, our viewers will answer and they will get the chance to win 1000 Taka Dara's voucher. So this is a question for you. Uh, can you please ask them? It's related to uh, telco industry. Yeah, this is definitely a telco question. What is ARPA? That's quiz number one. Yes, thank you. So keep commenting and you will get the chance to win Dara's voucher. Uh, coming to the next point, uh, to Emra again. Uh, the future of an organization might not always be bright, uh, but how can a, a leader can envision and take immediate action? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a good question. As I said, you know, the, the, as a leader, you have to read the future. This is the first thing. And, you know, as a leader or just one person, you cannot do anything. It's, uh, you need the team. You have to create your team first. It's, it's, uh, what I am doing with my team, always I am discussing. The, the, the best thing, you know, the easy way to get the success, uh, you know, for the future, you have to, you have to listen. You have to listen to the others. You have to share the, share with them. And you, you, you must trust them and they will believe you, they will trust you, then the success will come automatically, you know. And it's, it's my way actually. And as you said, of course, the, the, in the future, maybe companies or big companies, they will not be this much lucky. And as I said, if you create your team as a leader, I think there is no option to get the success. You know, instead of success, you will not get anything. And uh, now I have to say I believe and I trust my team also and near future we will be successful. It's about uh, listening to your team and Correct. having the trust. The trust is very important for uh, success. Now uh, there is a quiz time and you will uh, ask a question uh, for our viewers. Uh, innovation uh, distinguishes between a leader and followers. Whose quotation is this? You have to answer and if you can answer right, uh, you have the opportunity to win 1000 Takadara's voucher. So keep commenting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Embra. Now uh, coming back to Eric, uh, 
uh, importance of learning and development in an organization and how it adds value? Uh, so we are in an industry where we deliver technology products to our customers. And uh, let's face it, there are many more customers than there are team members in our company. And we are trying to be ahead of all those customers and we are trying to have those services ready, maybe even before the customers are thinking about that they want this service. So it's totally essential that we are very early in understanding customer needs or coming needs. It's also very essential for us to understand technology current and coming technology and at the same time understanding the business. So there's on, only one way of doing this is to make sure that your team constantly is learning and developing and innovating. Uh, and for me the, the main formula to make that happen is to make sure they collaborate. Uh, I believe individuals can learn and develop something alone but when you work as a team and you exchange things with your colleagues, that's when you really become innovative, which is a big, big part of, of uh, innovation and learning. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm coming back to Emra. As you said about that success factor, financial one and also the non-financial one, and you said about that story of like reaching a lot of countries through your airline. So it's all about that positive storytelling of your brand. So uh, what is the importance of positive storytelling for a brand and how actually a leader uh, you disseminate this positive message among uh, your stakeholders yeah actually uh, you know as you are doing the media business you should know better than us and as an airlines you know the the how we call the advertisement advertisement uh, it's not advertisement but kind of marketing you know, uh, what we are doing now, we are selling one product. And uh, we, as you said, we have the shareholders and we, we have to uh, make them happy and we have to explain the, all the details of the, our business to them, then they will, be un they will understand what we are doing. Then uh, when we are doing this, which way we will use? That is, that is the important question, of course. And uh, what we are doing, uh, we are contacting to them directly. You know, it's, uh, it's a, in the aviation sector, the, the, the other side, who is, uh, who is getting the service from airlines, they are alive. And you have to come to them directly. It's, it's, when you come to, come to them directly, then they, they, they will understand uh, what we are doing and what kind of values we have and what kind of standards we have that is uh, that is helping us no. thank you uh, so this is my last question uh, for both of you uh, tips for the future ceos so i will start with three, three tips for the future ceos well i, I think the most important uh, a ceo is do, doing is to to listen right. I, I think it's a fundamental mistake if a CEO believe that she or he is, uh, is smarter than the organization. So listening and learning from your colleagues is, is uh, totally essential. Uh, number two, I, uh, and I think it's building on number one, is as a CEO, you, you have great influence on who you are working with. And I believe one of the greatest opportunities you have as a CEO is to recruit people around you that makes you learn all the time. Um, I, I can honestly with a hand on my heart say that everyone in the leadership team in Bonnerlink uh, have something to teach and I'm learning something from everyone. And that is making an organization that is listening to each other and uh, and uh, and thereby also learning and developing and the last thing of course is never forget listening to your customers thank you uh, coming to mr emra three tips for uh, the future ceos actually roy way it's uh, the first thing i think uh, consulting consulting you know with your colleagues that is very important it's, it's, as he said if you think you are 
you know everything or better than others. That is not a good thing, you know. As a leader, you have to make consulting. Because even tea makers, maybe he knows better than you for, of course, specific things. And the second thing, again, it's a, uh, I think listening is ranking. The second, uh, third, uh, maybe you don't stop the learning. That is, that is the important thing because, you know, why we are uh, managing now, why we are here? Because we learn too many things in our past life, then we are here. Because, you know, in the companies, who is in above? That one will take you from down to upright. And then that time, you have to be ready. You, you must be capable. Then they will take you from down to up. That's why the learning is very important part. If you learn, it, it's good. And let me close the, with the quotation from Nelson Mandela. As I remember, he says, it's, uh, I never lose. I learn or I win. It's, mm. it's, it's really good quotation, you know. As a CEO, it's, uh, we, we, we cannot give up. We have to win or we have to learn. Uh, that is the best perspective, I think. Thank you, Imra. Thank you, Eric. Uh, right. Thank you for being with us and sharing your knowledge and your uh, ideas and all the stories, those amazing stories. I'm sure the viewers will like it. I mean, they will learn from it. Uh, we have one small souvenir from our sponsor, Dara. So oh. I'll be now handing it over to you. Thank so you. this is uh, Sakibal Hassan. He's signed bat and ball. It's for Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. Thanks. And oh. for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's nice. Yes. And thanks to Shakib also. Yeah, thanks to Shakib. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Emra, and thank you, Mr. Eric. Thank you both for being with us. Priyo Darshok, Amra Atske Duijon CEO, Oshadharon Shafuller Golpogulo Shunlam, Ebong Amra. সামনের পর্বে আরো দুইজন সিইও কে নিয়ে আসব এবং তাদের সাফল্যের গল্পগুলো শুনতে থাকব আমাদের সাথেই থাকুন থিংক লাইক সিইওস পাওয়ার্ড বাই দারাজ নিয়ে আমরা আবার আসছি পরবর্তী সপ্তাহে